You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Greetings once again to everybody out there from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. This is your Weekly Wrap-Up. It's Friday, October the 20th. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual is Eric Sprott himself. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig. Great to be here. I'm down in Jekyll Island, by the way, uh, which has uh, a lot of symbolic uh, significance to us uh, gold lovers and fed haters and uh, looking forward to chatting. I am as well. And hey, guess what? I've got something new for you to report before we get started. You, As you know, these weekly wrap-up segments are brought to you by the good folks at SprottMoney.com. Hey, how about this deal? Sign up for precious metal storage with Sprott Money and get one month of free storage. How about that? I think I'll take it. Yeah, that sounds like a good deal. Uh, you can visit SprottMoney.com for more information if that sounds intriguing. All right, my friend, what wasn't quite so intriguing this week was the action in the metals. We wrapped up a pretty strong week last week, got off to a good start on Monday, and then it's just been kind of a doldrum, not much fun week. Gold's down about $20 for the week. Silver's down about $0.25. Cents. Uh, anything catch your eye economically this week that would cause that action, or is it just uh, the same old paper game? Yeah. Well, as you know, it has nothing to do with economics, right? And I think uh, when we chatted about it last week, I said, you know, it seems really odd to me that they really haven't accomplished much in terms of covering their short position. <laughs> Therefore, we should all be very wary, and maybe these physical markets might overcome the paper markets. Well, that hasn't been the case so far this week. Uh, they might have done some shorting with the knocking the price down here recently. So it's all got to do with the positioning of the commercials on, on the COMEX. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that we might end up seeing signs of physical tightness, whether it's in, I talked about uh, palladium last week, or whether it's in cop, copper or nickel or zinc, some metal to exhibit a shortness, and all of a sudden the price goes crazy. And I think it might bring more people into into the metal space. And the metal space has been pretty interesting in the sense that, like cobalt set, uh, I think, a record high. Uh, we got nickel, uh, was up 10% in the last week or so. Uh, zinc is trading, you know, 50% above where it was about a year ago. So there are indications that uh, investors are seeking to uh, get more involved in the physical commodities here. Hey, let's talk about copper for a second. You and I have followed that all through the year this year as it uh, be, continued a rally that began well, about this time last year. It had been a downtrend for several years uh, with a rising dollar. And now all of a sudden it has broken out of a, a multi-year downtrend. It's, it's poised to have its best weekly close, Eric, since September of 2014. And if you go back then, the dollar index was trading in the 80s back at that point. I mean, could the, the base metals, more specifically copper, could they be telling us something about the direction of the dollar as we wrap up this year and move into next? Well, of course, it's, it's all part and parcel of it. You know, the fact that people would much rather own something physical than something paper, uh, which we see manifested in, in many ways. I mean, even the whole cryptocurrency thing is people turning their backs on fiat currencies and with huge amounts of money, we might add. And I think the metals are the same sort of thing, although I suspect that part of the metal move is it got to do with the whole electric vehicle thing, where there's way more metals used in the fabrication of electric vehicles and uh, combustion engines. Uh, so whether it's nickel or zinc or cobalt or um, lithium, things like that, they've all seemed to have uh, put on a pretty strong performance here because they're electric vehicle related. And, you know, when people talk about, well, by 2030, there won't be anything but electric vehicles, you got a sense that there's going to be some huge demand for all a variety of metals, including copper, of course. So I, I think it's probably more the, the fundamental than just the dollar. The dollar is always a factor in, in terms of people wanting physical things versus paper. So I wouldn't uh, discount the dollar potential weakness as a factor as well. Well, as we sit here this morning, again, uh, we're looking about 1285 in uh, COMEX gold. And the big news overnight was that maybe there is a bit of a, some movement in the log jam that is in uh, Washington, D.C., the political log jam. Trump not really getting anything done on his agenda. But suddenly there was some movement uh, in a budget area, maybe indications of tax cuts eventually. And that kind of flies in the face of what we got out of the Fed this week. Some of the Fed officials saying, no, 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 we don't, we don't want to see you do any tax cuts at all. And, and now we're right upon the verge of Trump naming either 
Mother Yellen to go on to another term or maybe someone to succeed her? How do you see all those puzzle pieces fitting together, Eric? Well, it's interesting that uh, there's various candidates been mentioned, and from time to time, whether it's Kevin Walsh or Jerome Powell, uh, sort of been trading, you know, who's the most likely person. And, uh, of course, (laughs) the the guess would be they're going to opt for the most dovish person because people always want the Fed to be friendly to the markets and the economy, theoretically the economy, but particularly the markets, because the markets tend to drive everything. So I suspect that Jerome Powell is in the uh, in the driver's seat here. Uh, it sounds like Worse is a little bit too eccentric uh, to to get the nod, even though he's a pretty uh, a serious realist. And uh, but realists, I don't think, are likely to to get the tab. So I think Jerome Powell will be the guy. Of course, it would be interpreted as very bullish because maybe you don't get the rate increases everyone's been blabbing about, which might also play well into the hands of gold because it's always that threat that they wave in front of them and said, we're going to raise rates and gold's going to go out of favor. Well, I don't think gold's going out of favor at all. And as you know, it's had quite a history of going up when rates have gone up anyway. So it's just uh, a false prophecy in a way. And uh, But I think if uh, Powell got nominated, I think it'd be very, very encouraging for gold. Yes, and that uh, seems to be the general uh, mood of the whole situation. Powell now a big favorite, and Trump expected to name someone by the first part of November. Uh, Eric, I just want to, uh, before we go, I want to get your thoughts on what's happening down in uh, Western Australia. Maybe an update from you. There's a lot of folks sure. in the shares yeah. excited about what's happening down there. Novo Resources had some drill results they put out earlier this week. Uh, I know one of your companies that you chair, Kirkland Lake, has a big position in Novo. I just want to see what you think about what uh, we've learned here lately. Sure. Well, sort of one by one, we knock off the uncertainties, right? And one of the uncertainties was, uh, does the deposit go down dip? We know it goes along strike because we've had uh, these nuggets, uh, watermelon seed nuggets discovered as many as 110 kilometers away from where the Purdy's reward discovery is. So the next question is, okay, well, does it go down dip? And, of course, the theory is that it's a former sea that's going to go down dip many tens of kilometers. <laughs> well, we haven't drilled many tens, but they drilled, it, I think, about 400 feet away from the outcropping. And they only announced that they've discovered between 4 and 14 uh, meters of conglomerate. They call them gold-bearing conglomerates. Uh, so that's very encouraging. Um just to remind everyone that which water strand was less than a meter thick. So if we can have more than a meter of uh, thickness here with better gold bearing, of course, it dramatically changes uh, how big this thing could get. And the one unknown right now, and a very major unknown, is the grade. And we don't have much to work with. We had the uh, mini bulk sample that ran about two ounces, which I totally discount because you need way more examples of that and falling in love with that kind of number. Uh, but I do take some comfort that the, the micro gold in that first sample, the very small particles, not the nuggets, was about 11 grams. And we've heard that there have been other people who have taken samples there where it's certainly north of double digit grams in the micro gold. So, you know, double digits implies a third of an ounce. Well, you start doing the math on, you know, many kilometers of strike and, many kilometers of dip uh, times uh, whatever thickness you want to give it, and then throw the grade in, you're going to get some stunningly large numbers here in terms of the potential size of these deposits. So we all stand by. I I certainly have an interest also in some of these uh, other companies that have properties down there because I don't think it'll just be Novo, even though I think Novo has by far the, uh, the best properties and the biggest properties. So it's very exciting. Uh, we all have, unfortunately, we have to stand by all the time. But the stock's acting well. I would say the drilling was incredibly successful. I mean, they hit, hit a conglomerate on every hole. I think they drilled uh, 11 or 12 holes. There was a conglomerate in every one. So the theory of it going down dip looks like it's going to carry the day. Now we wait for grade. And once we have grade, there's not much unknown because they can quickly step out, you know, kilometers at a time down dip and see if the conglomerate is there. And the whole theory of the gold precipitating out of the seawater looks like it's holding together here. There's been some great interviews, lots of fun for people to go to the various chat lines and see interviews and papers on 
you know, this what's water strand look alike. And it makes uh, for interesting, complicated, I might add, reading. But it's uh, it's very interesting what's going on down there. So we're all kind of excited about it, both as Novo shareholders and uh, I'm the chairman of Curtin Link. So we're we have a, a big stake there. Hopefully, it uh, stays together for us. Eric, you've been down there. Uh, I, 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 just your best guess, because I, I, this has been on my mind. How how long? How close are they uh, to actually getting the gold in production? I mean, are, is there infrastructure that needs to be brought in? Are they are they close to major roads? Okay. All that stuff. Well, yeah, they're they're close to uh, communities. They're like very close. Okay, I mean, it's a huge port. They got huge ports down there. They have uh, something like three hundred iron ore trains come into very two big ports down there. Uh, around maybe 100 trains a day with 300 cars in them. So it's a busy, busy, bustling place. Uh, there's going to be no shortage. There's no shortage of infrastructure. Uh, and I think to process that ore, I mean, uh, the people at uh, Artemis had a mill, which needs a refurbishment. But, I mean, you can just dig this stuff up and truck it into that mill very, very quickly. So, I mean, we could literally be producing a year from now. But I don't think it's the production so much as, you know, what's the size? And when you start talking in tens of millions of ounces uh, and multiples of that, it's the size that's going to be important, not the initial production. But production could happen very quickly for sure. Fair enough. Well, all right, my friend. It is always good to visit with you. And uh, by next week, we'll see how things look and see how things have changed. But for now, uh, I bid you adieu and, and hope you have a very nice uh, weekend and conference down there on Jekyll Island in Georgia. Well, I'm sure we'll have a rapt audience because all, I'm sure all the people down here that I'm speaking to are already converted. So it, it should be a lot of fun. Good point. Good point. All right, my friend, have a great weekend. And, and again, to everybody out there that listens, thank you for listening. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you again next week. With huge amounts of money, we might add. And I think the metals are the same sort of thing, although I suspect that part of the metal move is it got to do with the whole electric vehicle thing where there's way more metals used in the fabrication of electric vehicles and uh, combustion engines. Uh, so whether it's nickel or zinc or cobalt or um, lithium, things like that, they've all seemed to have uh, put on a pretty strong performance here because they're electric vehicle related. And, you know, when people talk about, well, by 2030, there won't be anything but electric vehicles you got a sense that there's going to be some huge demand for all a variety of metals, including copper, of course. So I, I think it's probably more the, the fundamental than just the dollar. The dollar is always a factor in, in terms of people wanting physical things versus paper. So You're listening to The Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Greetings once again to everybody out there from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. This is your Weekly Wrap-Up. It's Friday, October the 20th. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual is Eric Sprott himself. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig. Great to be here. I'm down in Jekyll Island, by the way, uh, which has uh, a lot of symbolic uh, significance to us uh, gold lovers and Fed haters, and uh, looking forward to chatting. I am as well. And hey, guess what? I've got something new for you to report before we get started. You, As you know, these weekly wrap-up segments are brought to you by the good folks at SprottMoney.com. Hey, how about this deal? Sign up for precious metal storage with Sprott Money and get one month of free storage. How about that? I think I'll take it. Uh, they might have done some shorting with the knocking the price down here recently. So it's all got to do with the positioning of the commercials on, on COMEX. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that we might end up seeing signs of physical tightness, whether it's in, I talked about uh, palladium last week, or whether it's in cop, copper or nickel or zinc, some metal to exhibit a shortness, and all of a sudden the price goes crazy. And I think it might bring more people into into the metal space. And the metal space has been pretty interesting in the sense that, like cobalt's at, uh, I think, a record high. Uh, we got nickel uh, was up 10% in the last week or so. Uh, zinc is trading, you know, 50% above where it was about a year ago. So there are indications that, uh, investors are seeking to uh, get more involved in the physical commodities here. Hey, let's talk about copper for a second. You and I have followed that all through the year this year as it uh, be, continued a rally that began well, about this time last year. It had been a downtrend for several years uh, with a rising dollar. 
And now all of a sudden it has broken out of a, a multi-year downtrend. It's it's poised to have its best weekly close, Eric, since September of 2014. And if you go back then, the dollar index was trading in the 80s back at that point. I mean, could the, the base metals, more specifically copper, could they be telling us something about the direction of the dollar as we wrap up this year and move into next? Well, of course, it's, it's all part and parcel of it. You know, the fact that people would much rather own something physical than something paper, uh, which we see manifested in, in many ways. I mean, even the whole cryptocurrency thing is people turning their backs on fiat currencies. And get. Yeah, that sounds like a good deal. Uh, you can visit SprottMoney.com for more information if that sounds intriguing. All right, my friend, what wasn't quite so intriguing this week was the action in the metals. We wrapped up a pretty strong week last week. Got off to a good start on Monday, and then it's just been kind of a doldrum, not much fun week. Gold's down about $20 for the week. Silver's down about $0.25. Cents. Uh, anything catch your eye economically this week that would cause that action, or is it just uh, the same old paper game? Yeah. Well, as you know, it has nothing to do with economics, right? And I think uh, when we chatted about it last week, I said, you know, it seems really odd to me that they really haven't accomplished much in terms of covering their short position. <laughs> Therefore, we should all be very wary and Maybe these physical markets might overcome the paper markets. Well, that hasn't been the case so far this week. 